Hello and welcome my friends. This is Dr. Shabdur Shibanaji. You have heard me speak about lots of homeopathic remedies, comparative metro medica in the past. But today what I am going to share with you is what holds most importance in homeopathic practice. The dispensing of homeopathic remedies. Whenever we talk about dispensing, all over the globe there are different ways how homeopathic medicines are dispensed. But the most correct way is what Hanuman has mentioned 200 years back. So you may be a homeopath who is listening to my videos, you may be a pharmacist, you may be a lover of homeopathy who enjoys listening to homeopathic lectures. And in all the three cases, you must be completely aware of how we must dispense our homeopathic remedies to increase your success manifold while taking the homeopathic remedies. Without any further ado, I would like to share with you some of the important sections from the Organon of Medicine. If you, are, have the, if you have the Organon of Medicine, 5th and 6th edition combined, translated by R.E. Dajan, that is the best book to have with you. Because if you consider the 6th edition, that is just with the LM potencies, but the 5th and 6th, you will get a complete overview of the centesimal scale as well as the LM potencies. And please do listen in to this very important piece of information. If you have the Organon, I would like to share with you a few of the important sections from the Organon of Medicine and how we can implement that in our practice. First and foremost, I would like to share with you and I will mention the sections as well. Section 286, aphorism 286. And this is very important to understand why we give importance to water dispensing. I have always, especially my students across the globe will understand and know that we give a lot of importance to water dispensing. You must dispense the homeopathic medicines in water. I am reading this section. For the same reason, the effect of homeopathic dose of medicine increases the greater the quantity of fluid in which it is dissolved when administered to the patient. Although the actual amount of medicine it contains remains the same. So whenever you are prescribing any homeopathic remedy, you must, must dispense it in water. A dry dose or a dose directly given on the tongue will never give such a response as the medicine in water. Why? For in this case, we have when the medicine is taken, it comes in contact with a much larger surface of sensitive nerves responsive to the medicinal action. So section 286 gives the apt description of why you should dispense in water. You see the line, the effect of homeopathic dose of medicine increases the greater the quantity of fluid in which it is resolved. So you always make sure to give the medicine in water in an acute or in a chronic case even when you are prescribing uh, centesimal potencies. I am talking about 5th edition here. So you must, must dispense it in water. This is one of the very important sections to highlight that, section 286. I will further demonstrate to you how we are prescribing the remedies, how we are dispensing in a practical way as well. Now one of the very important factors, my friends, is also you must understand the size of the globules. Across the globe, people use globules of different sizes, but again, one of the very important factors to understand is the size of the globules. I am going to share with you another very important section which mentions about the size of the globule is the footnote of section 285. For this purpose, it is most convenient to employ fine sugar globules of the size of poppy seeds. So whenever you are giving globules, it should be of the size of poppy seeds. So that poppy seed globule is very, very important. One of which imbibed with the medicine and put into the dispensing vehicle constitutes a medicinal dose. So Hanuman exactly mentions one globule and you are putting it in the dispensing vehicle. What is the dispensing vehicle? The dispensing vehicle is water. And when you are giving this, this constitutes a medicinal dose. People have different concepts of what is a dose, what is a homeopathic dose, and you do not have further to look to. Organon mentions it in details. So one globule, what is the size of the globule? Poppy seed. You put it in the dispensing vehicle and that will constitute for you a medicinal dose, which is very, very important to understand. Another very important factor when we are considering the dispensing is the dispensing in
with sugar of milk. Section 272. This is mentioning about dispense with sugar of milk. So if you consider section 272, 6th edition, I'm reading that again. Such a globule placed dry upon the tongue is one of the smallest doses for a moderate recent case of illness. So whenever you're placing that globule dry on the tongue is one of the smallest doses. Here but few nerves attached by the medicine. So why you're giving in water? So that more amount of nerves, more quantity of nerves comes in contact with your medicine to produce a better reaction to produce a favorable reaction for cure. A similar globule, crushed with some sugar of milk and dissolved in a good deal of water and steered well before every administration will produce a far more powerful dose. So when you are giving the globule plus crushed with sugar of milk and then you are giving it in water and that will cons consider a far more powerful effect, section 272, 6th edition. When you are giving it dry on the tongue, it is always a very minimum, very moderate quantity of dose. But whenever you are giving it in sugar of milk, dissolve in water and you are giving it to the patient, it will produce a far, far, far more powerful effect, which is very important for homeopathic prescribing. So my friends, you have to understand here, the dosage is very, very important. So many of us prescribe the correct remedy, but sometimes we make mistakes when we are dispensing the medicine. We give a too strong dose or we give a too minute dose by giving just dry on the tongue. So my earnest request to all my friends who are seeing me today that make sure you're dispensing the medicines in water, even in acute, even in a chronic case. Another very important factor to highlight this section 275, which Hanuman mentions. The suitableness of a medicine selected for any given case of disease does not depend on its accurate selection alone. So whenever you are prescribing a remedy, it does not only depend on its homeopathic selection, but likewise on the proper size or rather smallness of the dose. Whenever you are giving the remedy, you may have selected a correct remedy, but you must, must give it in the correct form. So you see, it depends on the proper size or rather smallness of the dose. How will you give it the minimum dose so that no aggravation is produced? More you dilute the remedy, there are less, less chances of any aggravation. A, B, there are more chances of favorable action because it comes in contact with more nerves. So, section 275 is also very, very important in that aspect as well. Again, one of the common problems plaguing today's homeopathic community, especially the homeopathic world, is people give drops of doses. I will give you two examples here. I have two files here. One is of a Bryonia 30, which is in dilute form, which is a dilution, which is a liquid of form of Bryonia 30. And I have globules here, which is the poppy seed globules of Bryonia 30. You will find homeopaths across the globe. You will find pharmacies across the globe prescribing this one, the drop doses, which is absolutely, absolutely not correct. This will always produce a violent reaction. But whenever you are giving the homeopathic remedies in globules, in the poppy seed globules, I am always saying that there is always a far less chances of aggravation, A, B, far more powerful effect. I will vouch for this again in different section. Section 246, footnote. Section 246, footnote. And the very important part here, my friends. Again, I will read that. And this is also very important. I am reading from the footnote in section 246, fourth paragraph of a long footnote. One single dose should be given and for instance in place of giving a single very minute globule, so you have to give what? A single very minute globule of the size of poppy seeds, moistened with the medicine. So you must moisten the globules with the medicine. In the highest dynamization, in the potentization, it is wrong to administer even six, seven or eight of them at once. So those of you who are giving six, seven, eight globules together, also that is wrong. Or even half or a whole drop. So if you are giving half or even a whole drop, that is also not correct. Result was almost always less favorable. When you are giving this, the result is almost always less favorable than it should have been. It was always actually unfavorable. 
often even very bad, an injury that in a patient so treated, it is difficult to repair. So whenever you are giving these in either A, you are giving 6, 7 or 8 globules, that's absolutely can produce an unfavorable effect. Or you are giving few drop doses, you see one or even half of a drop, Hanuman mentions that, that is also unfavorable. So use poppy seed globules, but use it in a minimum dose, use it in a single, or at least Hanuman has mentioned in different places, maximum two globules, not more than that, whenever you are giving the medicinal dose to the patient. So section 246, the footnote, the fourth paragraph, and I'm again, this is none of my ideologies or none of my theories. I'm sharing with you what the founder of homeopathy has mentioned regarding the dispensing of medicines about 200 years back. But unfortunately, we are faltering. We have developed a different methods. We have developed a different systems and we forget what we should look back to. Another very important section, my friends, section 285 and section 285 footnote. As I mentioned, it's always useful to give the globules to the patient and I have shared with you in 246 and different other sections where a drop or even half of a drop is harmful, is unfavorable to the patient. And here you see in section 285 footnote, for this purpose it is important to employ fine sugar globules of the size of poppy seed one of which imbibed with the medicine and put in the dispensing vehicle constitutes a medicinal dose, which contains about 300 part of a drop. For 300 such globules will be adequately moistened by one drop of alcohol. You see, Hanuman mentions here that 300 globules can be moistened, can be medicated with one drop. So whenever you're prescribing one drop of the remedy, you're always giving a large dose. You're giving 300 globules, which may produce a violent aggravation. So. Two points, my friends, I'd like to take back to you, especially if you are a common man listening into homeopathy. A, please make sure you are dispensing or you are taking the medicine in water. You have to dilute the medicine in water when you are taking it. A, B, make sure whenever you are taking the remedies, it must be in fine sugar globules of the cider poppy seeds. Do not take drops of medicines, which is always harmful for your treatment. For my homeopathic friends who are listening in, you may have the certain misconception that it's only in 6th edition in L. Importance is Hanuman has advised for dispensing in water. I've shared with you numerous sections. I shared with 286 where Hanuman mentions you must dispense in water even centesimal scale. And the very interesting section where Hanuman mentions that is section 128, especially with relation to drug proving. So section 128 in correlation with drug proving. Last few lines. We adopt to give to the experimenter an empty stomach. So you're giving to the experimenter an empty stomach daily from four to six very small globules of the 30th potentized dilution of such a substance moistened with a little water. So even when you're doing drug proving, here he mentions four to six globules, especially for drug proving. But during treatment, I mentioned to you, he mentions about maximum two globules. So when you're dispensing it in, even in the centesimal scale, he mentions to moisten it with a little water. So even in the 30th potency, if you have a misconception that only LM potencies are dispensed in water, my friend, you're absolutely and completely wrong. Even with the 30th potency, you must dispense it in water. So again, this is very, very important to understand for practice. Now what or how we go ahead with our method of prescribing or method of dispensing? Again, as I shared, this is the fine sugar globules, size of poppy seed. We have small paper capsules of which what we call as sachets that is filled with sugar of milk. I'm opening one of it. That is filled with sugar of milk. This is non-medicated sugar of milk. And when we are prescribing the remedy, maximum one to two globules, you're putting it in the sugar of milk and you're giving that to the patient. So I repeat again, one sugar globule or two of the size of poppy seed, the medicated, medicated medicine. You put it in this paper capsules or sachets which contains sugar of milk. So one globule of this medicine, put it in the paper capsule of sugar of milk sachets and then you wrap it up and then you give these to the patient 
And we always ask the patient that put this medicated sachet, medicated paper capsule into the water and dispense and drink that water gradually over a period of, if in an acute case it may be a day, it may be two days, it may be three days, but gradually drink it in water. You are diluting it and you are asking the patient to drink in water for a period of three to five days even, in many cases, in chronic cases. Why I am saying so? What are my points, my reasons of mentioning this to you? I shared with you section 286, dispense it in water. I shared with you section 272, where even Hahnemann mentions the globule is with, crushed with some sugar of milk and dispense it in water. I will share with you a few important section, parts from the chronic disease. This is, I am referring to Hahnemann's chronic disease. The name of the part is medicines. There is a chapter called medicines in chronic disease and this is again very important to share with you how we are prescribing the remedies. Third, fourth last paragraph is from the section of medicines. To prepare the pellets to give to the patient, one or a couple of little pellets are put into the open end of a paper capsule. I shared with you the open end of a paper capsule containing powdered sugar of milk. This contains powdered sugar of milk I shared with you. This is then stroked with a spatula or the nail of a thumb. You can stroke it with a spatula or nail of a thumb with some degree of pressure until it is felt that the pellets have crushed. Then the pellets will easily dis dissolve in water. And then when you are giving it to the patient, you ask them to dissolve it in water and take it. Now the, again there are many misconceptions. Pellet means big size globules. Next paragraph. Whenever I mention pellets in giving the medicine, I always mean the finest of the size of poppy seeds. So whenever I mean pellets, Hahnemann says it means the finest of the size of the poppy seeds, which is globule number 10, which is very important. Now whenever you are giving this in water to the patient, whenever you are dispensing the medicines in water to the patient, Hahnemann again reiterates that it is always best if the patient drinks it gradually over a period of days. Especially, he mentions about divided dose. I like you to again share with you another very important section from the chronic disease. And this is the preface to the fifth volume. I repeat. Preface to the fifth volume. If, however, every potency is dynamized with the same number of successive strokes, we obtain even the 50th medicines of most penetrating efficacy. So, any potency, we obtain penetrating efficacy. Medicines of, so that every minute pellet moistened with it, so whenever giving the remedy, moistened with the medicine, after being dissolved in a quantity of water, dissolving it in a quantity of water, must be taken in small parts if we do not wish to produce too violent an action on sensitive patients. So if you do not wish to produce a violent action on sensitive patients, you must dissolve it in water and give it in small parts. So when it, you see, whenever you are giving the globules, you are minimizing the chances of aggravation. A, B, you are producing a far more favorable effect than giving a drop dose of medicine. Secondly, whenever you are dispensing it in water, a larger number of nerves will come in contact with the medicine. And when you are giving it in small parts, so you give 30, half of, one third of this, one third of this and the last third over a period of time, first day, second day and third day and you are giving it in small parts, the patient is still taking one dose of the medicine but since you are dividing it into small parts, the chances of aggravation in case of sensitive patients is minimized. My father has always taught me, he always gives me an example of a pizza. Whenever you divide a pizza into three parts or four parts, and you are taking the one pizza in the morning, you are not taking one pizza in the afternoon, or you are taking one pizza in the evening. At the end of the day, you have still taken one pizza, but you are divided into three parts. You haven't taken three doses or three pizzas. Similarly, for skeptics of homeopathy or skeptics who are homeopaths who feel when you are dispensing in water, you are taking too many doses according to the sips, you are absolutely wrong, my friends. Because whenever you are giving the remedy, you are giving still one single globule. But think of the example of the pizza, like you divide the pizza into three parts and taking it throughout the day, but at the end of the day you are still taking one pizza. Similarly, you are just taking one dose of the remedy, 
but as you are dispensing it in water, as you have medicated the remedy and you are taking it in water, in small parts, in divided doses, the action of the medicine always, always increases manifold in those cases. So you must, must remember these factors while prescribing the remedy. Few other factors which I would like to share with you, again to reiterate my importance of these sections. This is, I am sharing with you from Boning Hussain's lesser writing, Boning Hussain, famous homeopath, and this is Boning Hussain's lesser writings. The name of the chapter is Honeyman's Doses of Medicines. Hahnemann's doses of medicine. And there he mentioned about his quoting Hahnemann. He was fully convinced it was not necessary in any case or under any circumstances to give drop doses of the medicine. So those of you who give four drops of Brian 30, my friend, you are giving absolutely in a very wrong way which may produce a violent aggravation. He saw injury of giving larger doses. So never ever prescribe drop doses of the medicine. It will always produce harm rather than good. Again, Boningosen quotes Hahnemann. Hahnemann at all times used well-known small pellets and I have shared with you in the chronic disease by pellets he means fine sugar globules of the size of poppy seed. Moistened with the dilution, dissolve one or two in water and shake it up. Obviously, in very sensitive patients, you must understand, even if you want to minimize the dose even further, you put one globule of this or two globules of this in the water. Generally, what we do, we ask the patient to drink this medicated water over a period of three days or five days, one third, one third, one third. Again, you're giving it in small parts to minimize the chance of aggravation. But you also have to understand if it's a very sensitive patient, you can take one spoonful of this, put it into a second bottle. Again, one spoonful of that, put in third bottle. So it depends if there is patient is highly sensitive, you can use the second bottle or third bottle in very sensitive patients as well. But in most of the cases, as I mentioned, you put one globule in this paper capsules, crush with the sugar of milk, and then we, are, we give this to the patient. They take this, we put this in the envelope, and we give this to the patient, and they take it home, and they dissolve it in water and drink it for a period of three days. I've shared with you different sections highlighting these factors um, to make you understand that this is the best and this is the only way of prescribing the remedies. Another part which I'd like to share with you before we end, a few other homeopaths who have always mentioned about di uh, dilution. This is from Art of Interrogation by Dr. Pierre Ishmith. Dr. Jar asserts that the administration of the remedy in watery solution does not constitute a repetition of the dose. So whenever you're giving one single globule in water, you're always giving one single dose. So this is very, very important to understand while prescribing the remedies. And lastly, I'd like to share with you another important section before we finish up. One of the very commonly asked questions is about expiry of homeopathic medicines. Do homeopathic medicines have an expiry? My answer to that is again from the organon, section 288 footnote. And he mentions here, A globule of which impregnated with the medicine retains for this purpose all its power undiminished for at least 18 or 20 years. My experience extends this length of time. So Hahnemann says a medicine, if it has been medicated, it will have its action for about 18 to 20 years. And so there is no question of expiry of homeopathic medicines. The globules can retain its power if it has been medicated for this length of time. Hahnemann says it may be more. My experience extends this length of time. So again, to summarize, please, my friends, I want you to know two things. A, use globules. Use globules of the size of poppy seeds, not, dro not, dose, not drops. Section 246, Hahnemann mentioned a drop or even half a drop is harmful. Forget three to four. Whenever using the globules, one globule you put this in this paper capsule, I shared with you sections from the chronic disease. 
you put this in paper capsule this contains fine sugar of milk you put one or two globules in this then you close it and you give this to the patient you dispense it with the patient and I'm sharing with you what we practically do we put this in the envelope and give this to the patient ask the patient to drink it in water you put this sachet containing the globule in water and you give it in small parts again my reference from the chronic disease so that's to minimize the aggravation so as to increase the favorable effect small parts first day one third second day one third third day the last third and you can even give it for five days to seven days in very chronic cases to minimize the chances of aggravation in very sensitive patients you may take one spoonful put in the second bottle another one spoonful in the third bottle you can do that for very sensitive patients Hanuman mentions that so make sure you follow these practical ideas from the organon of medicine and we do that in practice and believe me the result is always manifold as I shared with you section 275 the success does not depend on the accurate selection alone but on the rather size or the smallness of the dose which is important for prescribing so please go ahead implement these practices in your own practice thank you very much long live Hanuman long live homeopathy